good morning, and, and uh, thank you for coming to the climate uh, to listen to the 2018 climate survey results, which was pre presented by Curie. And I think what's important about these surveys, when we do these surveys, is not to just simply take them and put them on the shelf somewhere, but take the results of these surveys and then attempt to apply them so they're instructive and constructive, so we can all try to make this a better place. So, so the purpose of, of hearing this, of course, is, is so that we can see what areas we are doing well in and the other areas that perhaps we're not doing so well in, and then, Look at those results to make this a better place and a better experience for all of us here. So with that, I'm going to hand over to our new director or uh, coordinator of institutional research, um, Curry, who put all this together and she worked very hard on this and, and congratulate, I mean, we want to give, let's give her a round of applause for what she did. So without any further ado, Gary. Thank you, Dr. Forte. Thank you, everyone, for having me this morning. This is my first super large speaking engagement in my role here. Um, I've performed on the stage but never spoken <laughs> with my materials on a big screen and my voice um, made so loud. Um, so thank you very much for having me. So as Dr. Forte mentioned, I um, helped conduct the 2018 climate survey. So this is an employee satisfaction, um, workplace environment satisfaction or dissatisfaction, sort of realizing data collection effort so that we can, as he mentioned, focus on areas that maybe we need um, some improvement and we slice this data, looked at it collectively and sliced by a different employee or staff grouping. So we'll look at those results um, as a group and then independently and then talk about maybe future directions and action plans that will be devised over the summer and what we might be able to do starting fall with some of this. Okay. Oh, so it advances there. Okay, so the objectives for today, again, are to discuss the functions of a climate survey, so why this was conducted, how this might vary from the previous version that was implemented in 2010 that you may have participated in if you were here then. I'll discuss also how the questions that you completed are organized into items or constructs as we refer to it in survey research. We'll talk about results and I'll discuss the open-ended responses where you were asked or given an opportunity to talk about your uh, most favorite, least favorite aspects of employment here. And then I'll take feedback in the form of questions and we can have a, a I hope to be an interactive discussion and um, maybe I'll jot down, down some notes in this presentation version to take back um, to look at and revisit. So functions of a climate survey. So why would this be something we want to conduct? So the overall goal of this is to assess at our institution the views, perceptions, opinions, and needs within the workplace environment, which is really important to maintain a level of engagement, excitement about coming to work, of overall productivity and just to make sure that the environment is a suitable and beyond suitable a highly enjoyable one for people who are here okay so we've analyzed these data as i mentioned collectively and by employee group the groups were um, separated by full and part-time faculty administrators and professional staff groups into one group and support staff and maintenance groups into one group so in addition to looking at views perceptions opinions we look at overall positivity of workplace environment grouped into four what we're calling focus areas. So these are instructional or institutional structure. Um, so how our institution is structured, the shared governance model falls into this. And I'll give specific examples to remind you of some of the items that you, um, you answered questions around. And we'll talk about results overall for each of these groups and based on individual questions that were answered. So secondarily, we look at supervisory relationships. So this is the direct relationship with your supervisor or who you report to, work with every day, um, whether you feel your work is valued, your opinions are elicited or um, included in decision making. Teamwork, so are we using problem solving skills? Are we working together within our division department? Are we working across division department? 
And then student focus, which we should value very highly here because this is the ultimate service that we offer as an institution. So are all the decisions, or a good number of the decisions we make centered around student needs and focus, and are we preparing students for future career and education? So the 2018 survey that was just implemented was modeled after the PACE survey that was distributed in 2010, as I mentioned. So this is the personal assessment of college environment, and this model has been rigorously studied. We outsourced, um, actually, through the PACE company to have this conducted previously. So I worked with HR, we modified some of these items based on our current needs, um, and we felt strongly that this model would suit our needs in 2018. So the overall model focuses on leadership as a driver of high scores in those four focus areas, which would ultimately lead to high success for students as our primary outcome of interest. We didn't directly measure whether student success was impacted by those four areas, but that's a strongly implied outcome and something that we can say confidently as an institution, we're moving toward improved outcome for our students if we can maintain positive consensus in these four areas. Okay, so if we look at um, the organization of items and constructs and what we call psychometric testing and survey research, this is just a way to confidently um, describe to the stakeholders, those of you, that this instrument is reliable and valid. So if we look at what PACE reports for reliability and validity, they report very high statistical values that this instrument is reliable and that if you all were to take this again, you would answer very similarly, if not the exact same way, to each of the items. Meaning that responses really are reflective of the question content. So if we're asking you a question about whether or not you feel your work is valued by your supervisor, when you answer with high agreement to that statement, you really are answering to the exact question asked of you. And if you were asked that again, it wouldn't be due to some phenomenon. So we're capturing what we want to capture. High validity has been reported with this instrument, meaning that all of the items or questions that are within those focus area groups are intercorrelated. So statistically, that means they're related enough that the individual scores can be averaged to report one area score. So we can look, instead of looking at all 50 to 60 items individually, we can break this up into four areas. So if you recall, you answered items on a scale from one to five where one was strongly disagreeing to whichever statement you were asked, and five was strongly agreeing to that statement. So thus, a higher score would lead to more agreement or greater consensus among the cohort that our institution provides a positive workplace environment based on that question, and then in a greater summary of the focus area that that question belongs to. So to remind you some specific examples that comprise each of these focus areas, so when I'm saying them, they kind of make a little more sense so you can talk about how they're different. Institutional structure dealt with questions such as uh, whether or not our actions at the institution reflect the mission. Other questions, maybe um, do we have a spirit of cooperation, in your opinion, that exists at our institution. As far as our relationships with supervisors, we ask questions regarding um, whether you feel your supervisor expresses confidence in your work, values your work, and the extent to which outcomes are clarified for you, which we would agree, I hope that these are important uh, facets of what a positive place to work. Teamwork constructs um, were centered around questions like whether there's an opportunity for all the ideas within your division and department to be exchanged. So do people ask? your opinion about things, do they include your feedback that you give, and also the extent to which problem-solving skills and those higher cognitive skills or those collaborative skills are used within a division or across. And lastly, for student focus, which we should care very much about as I mentioned, are we looking at student needs as a central piece of what we do at our institution? And does our institution prepare students for a future career or continuing education, which we would hope that would be rated highly. So looking at the demographic data, so if you recall, we did not ask 
identifiable information in this questionnaire, so it didn't ask anything that was related to personal attributes or characteristics, only related to your workplace status, um, and that's inherently needed so that we can group you into the appropriate staff group for results. So in total, 144 participants responded, giving us an overall response rate of 43%, which is lower than we anticipated and lower than what we would have liked. So results are a little more meaningful the, the more um, the greater response rate you have. So there's opportunities for my office to look at maybe how the questionnaire was constructed, distributed, and how data um, were collected and responses elicited. So of the 144 participants that responded in total, three people uh, decided not to disclose their employment status or their, their grouping. So they were not able to be included in group results. So if we look at individual um, participation, we had highest participation among administrator professional staff groups at 82% of the, all of the total that were invited to participate. The next highest participation was in our full-time faculty group at 68%. So some of the percents that are lower represented, like the, uh, the part-time faculty, that was a tad expected because um, this wasn't mentioned to participants, but we did only distribute this to winter 2018 part-time faculty. So getting, uh, and that's a, the largest, comprises the largest subgroup of the total population. So getting a lot of those responses uh, we knew would be difficult compared to other groups that might be smaller. <laughs> so to continue demographic statistics, Again, uh, three people decided to not disclose their years of employment, but we felt this important to collect because we wanted to know how, um, how long-term invested or the kind of length of experience would be expressed in these responses. So if you're grouping percentages, we have the majority of people being here over 10 years, which gives us a really comforting feeling, or at least myself as the person doing the analysis, that people are invested on the campus and their opinions are from from sort of a, a long perspective. So this gives you kind of the range of how long we've been here. So if we look at overall focus area scores, remember we have those four areas that we are looking to um, determine whether our environment is positive, grouping items within them. We see that the highest rated focus area was in student focus. So that's something that I would say we expected and that we're glad to discover. We found the lowest average score grouping to be in inst the institutional structure. So now we'll talk about in subsequent results how those are broken out by question by staff um, and faculty group. So looking at institutional structure by the different staff and um, employee groupings, the highest rated group was our part-time faculty group. So with under a four score, um, their rating institutional structure is a, a positive workplace environmental factor. And our full-time faculty are rating the lowest. So um, these results may not be very meaningful now, but we will go through the individual items and talk about highlight areas for what drove those scores up and down. So overall, if we look at employees across the board, we scored these items high. So these are areas that we want to celebrate in and keep driving high scores in. Uh, so we feel overall that the actions of our institution reflect the mission, which is, is good that we have diversity among staff and that this is effectively promoted. So this could be um, diversity in opinion, views, perceptions, and uh, racial ethnic diversity. So this was subject to opinion. Institution-wide policies we feel are really guiding our work here, which we'd be comforted also to discover. And we are agreeing that we receive adequate information regarding important activities. So we're being well-informed and timely informed of those things. Some areas where we're scoring, scoring a little low that we might want to look at embedding in an action plan over the summer are that we don't feel necessarily that decisions are made at the appropriate level. Problem-solving techniques are not used uh, according to majority opinion throughout all levels and divisions in our institution. We don't feel that as employees, we're very able to influence the direction of our college. 
We do not rate highly that a spirit of cooperation exists in our institution, and we rate um, low that we have opportunities for advancement. So again, these are some areas that based on scoring, we might want to focus on and revisit. And I've pitched the idea, working with HR and with Cabinet, um, to maybe do some qualitative data exploration into some of these areas. So um, if we're seeing, if we look at the data and we see that some of these scores are very low, we might want to ask some of you to get together in groups and discuss specific reasons why those might have been rated as such and talk about how we can action on them. So individual items, what I've done is showed in bright red where we're scoring high. Now this is relative to the overall score, so we're not, you know, something close to a five is certainly high, but something in the threes could be high relative to other scores. And then in blue, these are areas where we're lagging behind, so some things that drove um, overall scores down. So as you can see, red is um, very common in our part-time faculty column, where we're feeling like decisions are made appropriately in that group, that there's diversity, that we have a focus in administration on meeting the needs of students. And some columns that have more blue are full-time faculty, which we would expect from the summary results. Um, we're not feeling very much like decisions are made appropriately, and that administration has student focus. So those are some areas we could discuss. Other questions you responded to, again, part-time faculty really feeling like they are shared information, problem solving is used, that they have an ability to influence the direction, and that we have open and ethical communication. So we have low scoring items for full-time faculty in all of these categories, and um, also support staff maintenance categories, three out of four, um, we're feeling not as in agreement on those items compared to full-time faculty and other groups. The last set of items, looking at motivating performance, how our institution motivates us, our cooperative environment, institution policies, and the um, organization of our institution. Part-time faculty are um, rating this very high. Full-time, not so much, and then um, maybe um, not so much coming to consensus either way in other groups. But we do see administrators and professional staff having two low categories in those items. And then, again, um, something that, that I found interesting, too, is that across the row, everyone is sort of feeling like we receive information regarding activities, so we're well-informed. Maybe there's a, um, a disconnect with what we're doing with that information or how that information is compiled or what is involved in that information. And then if we look at, across the row, opportunities for advancement, overall, as an organization, we don't feel like there are very many of those for us. So in our supervisory relationships, we have, um, again, part-time faculty scoring highest in that group, where now we see administrators and professional staff scoring lowest in, in these constructs. So this is how we're interacting with our supervisor, and maybe some of the ways we receive or the timeliness of how we receive feedback, some of those kinds of items. So overall, we're expressing that our supervisors are confident in our work as employees and that we're given opportunity to be creative. So those are really engaging points that we can sort of maximize. However, low scoring items include things like supervisors actively seeking our ideas or seriously considering the ideas. So maybe our ideas are sought out and we're in meetings and we're contributing, but are they seriously considered? And what might be the deliverable that's missing there is, is there action taken on those, those um, ideas? We have low ratings overall in our supervisors helping us improve our work. And we are at a consensus that we would like more professional development and training to be available. So looking at individual items, part-time faculty rating these things high into the fours in some of these. So part-time faculty really feel like their supervisors are confident in their work, which is comforting. Support staff maintenance also feeling that way overall. In fact, most of us, um, with the exception of 
a little low scoring and administrators and professional staff are feeling like we have confidence expressed in what we're doing. Full-time faculty um, are feeling like maybe work expectations aren't so positive or maybe not well communicated. And this item here talking about unacceptable behaviors identified. So this would be a scenario where um, the supervisor is identifying what is appropriate and what is inappropriate behavior in the workplace. And is that an open, transparent conversation where you're being reminded of that or that's being brought up to maybe a colleague or someone that you're noticing or yourself that is participating in that? Okay, so we're not seeing that happening um, very often in full-time faculty or among our administrators or professional staff. So administrators and professional staff across the board um, are not feeling very much, according to these data, that they receive timely feedback or that it's appropriate to what they're asking for. Um, maybe there's issues with being having ideas actively sought out and ideas seriously considered. So this group really drove down um, those areas as um, opportunities for improvement. Where we see that part-time faculty are, are sort of okay with that, um, support staff maintenance and full-time faculty kind of on the fence there too. So across the row, um, as employees in total, we feel we're given the opportunity to be creative, which we mentioned in the summary. <clears throat> Individual results are, they're not as telling as in other item categories. Um, Full-time faculty actually feeling more favorable here about creativity and opportunity to express ideas and a little bit less favorability um, among other groups in those categories, but something to point out, um, full-time faculty would also like more professional development, but we saw that as a low driver among all. So again, these are, it's difficult to, without going through each item and each score, which we certainly can do, I have that data available. It's difficult to summarize, but um, overall, I think we've picked out in these focus areas some of the needs that we should be focusing on. So now looking at teamwork, how we work together, how we collaborate, our cooperative environment, we see uh, part-time faculty again. They seem very satisfied with their experience in all these groups. And uh, full-time faculty seem, uh, seeming most dissatisfied in this category. So overall as employees, we feel that we have opportunities for all ideas to be exchanged within our division and department and that divisions and departments provide an environment that's open to those ideas. So where we see in supervisor relationships, maybe that direct report structures are not experiencing, um, that my ideas are able to be shared, that my opinions are included. Overall, throughout our divisions and departments as a team, we feel like that's happening. So maybe that's an opportunity to tighten up uh, those interactions. And we scored very few items low in this category, but we do not feel like there's a cooperative environment within the division or department, even though we feel like our ideas are um, able to be shared in an open environment. So that is maybe an opportunity to do some qualitative digging to see how we're defining an open environment and how we're defining cooperation. So to me, um, those those results are contradictory, but we can look into that further. So again, uh, part-time faculty really feeling like there's cooperation in their division or department, that there are problem-solving techniques being used to uh, address issues, and that their ideas can be exchanged and that those are involved in decision-making. Um, lower ratings in full-time faculty on those, and um, not maintenance and support staff feeling less cooperative within their division and um, you know, not really much um, consensus either way in administrators, but they are rating highly in that group that they feel that their ideas can be exchanged. So both part-time faculty and administrators rate highly that they feel that they work in an open environment and that divisions are coordinating efforts appropriately with individuals from other divisions. And another thing you may be thinking, and that you're right in thinking, 
is that some of these items are just inherent within certain jobs and not within others. So if you work in administration or a professional staff role, you are having to coordinate with individuals from other groups. So if you're not given a lot of opportunity to do that, you probably aren't rating that highly because you don't have much experience to rate. So that's another sort of caveat to keep in mind. We're seeing low ratings in these areas, however, from full-time faculty. So again, that's an opportunity to, to maybe tighten that up. Um, so faculty are not feeling particularly that we are coordinating efforts with individuals among divisions. So this could be um, a division-specific issue that could be addressed. So if we look at student focus, we have part-time faculty highly rating this, and it is, it's nice that a faculty group is really rating this highly because they are delivering the instruction that prepares our students to uh, be successful and that is focusing our efforts around students. We see, however, administrators and professional staff rating this category lowest. So because there's decision-making happening at that level and um, some other roles involved there that we would like to see greater student focus opinion in, we would probably want an action on that in an action plan. So overall, we feel, according to scoring, that um, our jobs here are relevant to the mission. That's a very engaging piece, and I was glad to see that. Support staff and maintenance are meeting the needs of students according to, I would assume, themselves, their opinion, and the opinion of their colleagues. Students are receiving an excellent education according to our opinion. We feel that our institution prepares students for a future career and also that we're preparing them for further learning. So major, major objectives emphasized throughout our mission, vision, and values, things that we really want to be doing and we think we are doing them. Some areas we're scoring low, however, are that, um, which again, peculiar compared to previous results, we aren't feeling that students are central to what we do here. So again, opportunity to go in and, and gather real-time opinion. What are we deciphering as central? So how would, how would you feel as an employee or staff of this institution that we make students more central, right? We're not feeling overall that administrators or professional staff are meeting our student needs. So again, concerning, it should be to us. We should discuss with our groups, maybe in follow-up data collection, what exactly are the needs that aren't being met? Why are we feeling like that? Because we would like all of our support groups and um, administrative groups to be student-centered. So we're not feeling like students are very assisted with their personal development, nor do we feel like students are satisfied with their educational experience. So this is a highly subjective item, and I had discussion with, um, with others in administration and in cabinet about whether this item is very telling. And again, it's peculiar to ask an individual about the behavior or opinion of someone else, someone other than themselves. So we did rate that we feel we are giving students a quality education, but we, we rated low that we feel they are satisfied. So it's more telling if we ask the actual student <laughs> if they're satisfied. So that's another follow-up piece and something that we will consider in the future. And we do ask those kinds of questions in other data collection avenues. So again, part-time faculty rating all these items very high, that we're keeping students at the center of what we do, we have relevant jobs, we're meeting needs. They do feel that um, administrators and professional staff meet student needs. Conversely, no other group, including administrators and professional staff themselves, are rating that that, that group is meeting needs. So that's peculiar. Again, discussing why are we feeling like that. And I appreciate the the very um, transparent and um, you know honest feedback provided in this questionnaire and the honest reflection, and that may be to a due to a variety of reasons. There could be some resource needs, some miscommunication, some some issues there to look at. Okay, support staff maintenance are rating most of these areas low, with the exception that you know we're pretty much all feeling like we're relevant in our role. So we have um, 
You know, many of our groups grading that our support staff and maintenance are meeting the needs of students. So, albeit not as high as a 4.5, you know, right behind the 4.8 in the, the cumulative of 4.01, we see that support staff and administrators are also grading that support staff are doing a good job. So, that's a group to celebrate there. We are feeling in part-time faculty that student ethnic and cultural diversity is important and emphasized. We're feeling that less, um, to a lesser degree, in administrators and professional staff groups. And we're feeling across the board, um, well, in, in overall and in two of our groups, very strongly that students receive an excellent education. But we're seeing in that row that administrators and professional staff rate that the lowest. So again, peculiar things. So maybe delving into that. Part-time faculty really feeling like we're preparing our students. Students are um, able, they're being set up for opportunities for further learning, for career placement, career advancement. That they're assisted with their personal development, which is, which is really important and I'm glad we asked questions about this in conjunction with education. And feeling, you know, part-time faculty are feeling like students are satisfied as well with their educational experience. High ratings in full-time faculty in these areas, but low ratings among administrators and professional staff. Um, so maybe their feelings on assistance with personal development and education, you know, we need to dive into that more. Again, support staff maintenance are interacting with students, but very differently than someone involved in instruction. So they may not have a lot of experience or rather opportunities in their daily working to talk about whether they think students are assisted in these ways, but their opinion is certainly important because they do see students and they might see them in a different light than an instructor or an administrator. So if you recall, in addition to the four focus areas, we also asked you, I think there was a subset of 11 questions that were sort of ad hoc, where they were added beyond the model. Things that human resources and myself felt important to gather data on. So these were not um, subject to those psychometric analyses. They're not correlated in any way, so we can't group them. So we have to look at those responses individually. But overall, within those 11 um, items, we rated highly that we are in a physically and emotionally safe environment. So that is very comforting, um, I think, for myself and I hope for all of you. And it really does drive a lot of those other positive and high score items. So we're more engaged, we care more, we feel like our job is more relevant and we want to do more for ourselves, for colleagues and students if we feel like we're safe and appreciated that way. And overall, we're very proud to work at this institution. This was one of the, if I do recall, actually the high, most highly rated items. So that's something that um, is good to, to see. Some things we scored low are that we are encouraged to participate in decisions involving resource and non-resource allocation. So difficulty there again, maybe within your job, you are not involved in that process. So that item was difficult for you to respond to. But what we do need to look at is visibility into those that are directly or should be directly involved in that. Are they feeling like they're, they are um, asked to participate in those decisions? We're not feeling very strongly that we have innovation encouraged, which that's something that we would want to drive up. We're not feeling like we have an environment where we treat each other with uh, mutual respect and dignity, which in some groups that was contradictory to their environment of inclusion, feeling like they were welcome for ideas to be shared. So again, some um, inconsistency in responses, but that really is the way that human perception data kind of fall out. The follow-up would then, again, be let's ask questions about that. Talk about why those things are not similar depending on the question asked. And we're not feeling very, um, very confident that we have positive relationships between our faculty, staff, and administration. So again, if we have positive workplace environment or cooperative environment in other groups, that should have been a highly rated item. But because it's not, we still need to talk about, um, as a follow-up, 
what that means to have positive relationships and how we can make that better. Because overall, we will be disengaged and um, not able to provide as quality of a service to students if we're not uh, feeling like we're working well together. So individual items um, included those in the first column. So we see that uh, faculty in our part-time group are really understanding the college priorities. Um, they feel like they have innovation encouraged in their job. We see low ratings, however, among most other groups in these areas. So not much innovation or participation encouraged among full-time faculty to be involved in um, resource decision-making. Um, administrators and professional staff not feeling like they're encouraged to be very innovative, nor that they're engaged in that resource um, allocation. And that would be a group that we would um, find that strange to have fallout in. So maybe have a discussion there. Across the board, in fact, we're rating very low that we are at all involved in how resource decisions are made. So that's an opportunity to, to visit there. Part-time faculty really feeling like um, feeling like they we treat each other with respect and dignity. So that might be something experienced in their cohort or within their division or group, um, where they're feeling that uh, very safe emotionally and physically, as are other groups. Um, we administrators and professional staff rating those categories very highly, but um, full-time faculty sort of indifferent about that or average opinion there, so we want to bring that up. We would ideally like right across the board in those last two categories. So, And we have invested in some mechanisms to be, feel more physically safe, and we do have our employee assistance services and other sort of services available to deal with emotional safety, but maybe just um, emphasizing advertising, working with staff on those more. Looking at these next two items, um, the positive relationship between our faculty, staff, and administrative groups, part-time faculty feeling strongly here, where all other groups not feeling very strongly. In fact, uh, full-time faculty really feeling like there's, there's lack of uh, positive relationship among those groups. So because our full-time faculty um, and part-time, because they're delivering instruction and they're driving student success, I would argue, in a very um, needed capacity. We really want to look at that issue, I think, later on. As well as administrators, you know, rate, we're rating that low in that category and support staff and maintenance. So, again, some discussion there. And uh, employee recognition programs, this is rated most highly among part-time faculty. Um, lower ratings relative to the average in all other groups with, um, it looks like, support staff maintenance seeing that that's lowest um, or expressing lowest rating there. And then the last couple items to discuss individually are the, um, the first is the comprehensive benefits um, package that's offered to our institutional staff. Um, low rating actually here for part-time faculty. But maybe inherent within the position again, um, administrators, professional staff feeling most um, favorable in that group. And being proud to work here uh, relative to the other scores in this category, and the score is a very high range. And we're all with part-time faculty leading the charge feeling very proud to work at the institution. So now the challenge I think is to help that last item where we're high rated drive pulling up some of those other individual items. So if we have pride in our work environment, there should be opportunity to drive some of those others that we're scoring a little low in. So if you recall, you were given an opportunity to respond in an open-ended format to, your, um, to speak to your most enjoyed aspects of working at the college and your least enjoyed aspects. So out of the 144 respondents, 121, respondents provided comments about what they like most about working here. And so I've used some text analysis with um, qualitative software to kind of look at how these comments are grouped. So most often we were stating that we like interacting with students. And this was not analyzed by staff group, so this is not just in those that deliver instruction saying this. 
overall, and that, that's good to know. We students are why we're here, so we like interacting with them. We feel like we have a, an environment where we can be successful. We like helping students succeed, another encouraging theme. We like interacting with coworkers as a common theme. And we enjoy instruction and teaching for those of us that have that as a primary role. So again, if you notice some of these qualitative comments not matching some of the, the high rated items in the individual constructs. And this happens with kind of mixed method data, um, but again, I would really appreciate opportunity or uh, participation and I can take your feedback on this for you all to, to talk about this in a, sort of an open forum. Um, and maybe a focus group or something, a small group interview, so we can kind of get into those discrepancies. The least favored aspects of working at the institution were leadership um, and administrators. So again, this is a, a vague theme where the software pulls out most commonly cited words and sentence structures, so we're not sure really what about the leadership nor the administration is um, concerning, that'd be something we need to look at further. Adjunct instructors feel that they're treated differently in some instances, I would say compared to their full-time um, counterpart, so some opportunity to address those issues. Um, some individuals or a good portion brought up some faculty union issues, so some difficulty in the work environment with that. Resource allocation, which if you recall was rated very low, so consistent with our, our, quali our quantitative data. Uh, some individuals express difficulty uh, meeting the demands of meeting schedules, so things are scheduled in times when they're not able to attend and they're not worked with um, or, or accommodation is not made to work around that. And there was an expression of lack of communication. Even though we rated highly, that we are receiving adequate information. So again, what, what does the lack of communication mean? We have to discover that with further collection of data. So I know I've, I've talked nonstop, which is sort of has to happen in a big lecture hall scenario. I like to be more interactive usually, but I really appreciate your participation in this data collection effort. Um, I know that the questions were lengthy, there were matrices involved, which are not fun for some, um, but we definitely, we being uh, the human resource department that sort of sponsored the effort and myself being the data, the data coordinator, really appreciate any feedback you have about your experience. Um, and if I were giving this presentation to individual staff groups, which is what the original intent was, I would elicit that feedback live and record that um, because I think needs are different among those groups. Um, but I think overall now, if you have questions or comments, we have some time to, to take those. And if I don't know the answer to the question, I will certainly get um, the resources needed and follow up timely with you. Um, very timely because as you notice, I'm gonna be exiting <laughs> the institution for a few weeks soon. And I'm very proud that I stood through this entire presentation. Without issue. And we hope that happens. So thank you. So if you have questions or comments that you want to share, I can take those. I can kind of try to see if I find hands out there. Any questions? Yes, is that Tom? Yeah, yep. Is there, is there a place to see the individual comments that people made? So uh, I very much figured we would we would have that question. I have published the individual comments. However, we have removed any comments that indicate information that could be potentially identifiable to a person. So if you've named um, someone who is a single in a role, so like this, I wasn't involved in this effort, or maybe you commented on me and I missed it, but if you say institutional research coordinator, that's just me, so I'm identified there, so that would be removed from a comment. But um, all that to say, I do have those compiled and I have a, a summary report that has figures and tables and all this information in um, an easier way to decipher that we're going to have posted to the website and that we can distribute uh, via email. And certainly if you have questions about raw data, I always keep that and I'm very transparent and we can talk about that in my office. Anyone else? 
I did such a great job that no one has done that. <laughs> yep, Jim? Yep. That's a great question. My hope is that we work on, um, when I return, some what we're calling action items. So some things that within our resource and time constraints we can realistically do for the groups that are expressing need. And we talk about how to roll out a plan for that. So maybe we get more professional development. We have some workshop sessions on how to be more co cooperative, excuse me, and collaborative, and how to have open discussion with supervisors, things like that. And we would prepare those items to be actioned on when we start in the fall. Um, regarding follow-up data, I really would like to do some of these focus groups. My um, Most of my training is in qualitative data collection, so I would like to do groups of that are small, between six and 10 people in each staff. Um, area and do multiples of those until we exhaust the themes or near exhaust the themes that come out and summarize those data in a qualitative report that would then be represented, redistributed, and that would be um, within the context of those action items to either confirm or maybe kind of weed out the ones that aren't so necessary based on um, a more in-depth interpretation of these questions, if that makes, if that answers your question. Yep. Anyone else? Yep, Paul? Great group. You say you'll take for public consumption a lot of the comments and not identifying individuals, mm -hmm. which is totally perfect. That's totally appropriate. Who will get to see all that? Who will get to see any potentially the whole, identifiable? The full Monte. Who, who will get to see the whole results? So, certainly, I. Um, as the person that houses raw data, see that. Um, and we, I have shared raw data with President Forte because he has made some decisions as to which information he feels are, are identifiable. Um, but beyond, beyond that level, we would not be sharing that information with some groups and not others and redacting that just in the report, if that's the question. So, um, and so as far as um, true anonymity, that, that is maintained because we don't, I take all of the information out of these results because the, uh, the SurveyMonkey software does tell us the computer ID that the software or that the survey was completed on and the time of completion, that's all removed. I don't look at that at all. And it does tell us um, you know, time of day, the date, all those kinds of things. So, no, and really, um, unless a comment references an office of one person, so a specific vice president, our president, um, where there's no way around it could be anyone else. We really have no way of knowing who's saying what and what these things are about. But um, if we can see that, no one else sees that beyond this office. Yes, Grace. Okay. Um, so. My color coding, yeah. The the color coding are a. I, I would say it's it's mid between subjective objective. I didn't do some robust statistics to do that, but um, it's relative to the overall average rating in that group. So if you notice, sometimes a four, something approaching a four, is actually low. If everybody's scoring four point six or above, really it's low relative to whatever we scored in average. I guess is the answer. Yeah. And again, those are, are things that's my opinion based on looking at the data. But when we dive into, you know, is this really low? You know, we can look at that and be a little bit more specific about what's driving that. And we might move it from a low to moderate category when we do subsequent collection on that. Anyone else? No? Well, certainly my office is is open um, to anyone who has questions. I know that 
Um, inevitably, people are wondering things maybe, or they would like to see bits of data that weren't presented here, and you might want to ask that outside of an open forum, and that's appropriate. Um, I'm very responsive by email and phone. Um, I will be making my exit sometime next week. I asked the baby to please stay here until today <laughs> was over. This is my last big application, um, and she listened. That's probably the first and only time she ever will listen. Um, so that, that was exciting to get through this, um, but certainly um, any questions that you send in, we can funnel through um, others that uh, could get you an answer, get you access to that data. Yes, question? So I, just wanted to, I just wanted to ask you, as far as the maintenance, maintenance department, mm -hmm. is, this, is this survey really going to change anything with the supervisors and maintenance and custodial? Yeah, so that's a reasonable question and it's something that should be asked. So my hope as someone who's disseminating these data is that yes, there will be change. And that will be driven by creating these actionable items. Um, you know, change relative to what we can't realistically change. And change relative to human behavior. So we can, uh, we can look at opportunities to have more open communication. We can create professional and personal development opportunities, but those have to be taken advantage of and those have to be applied in the workplace by individuals. So we can provide resources to bring change and hope that people um, adopt that. So that is my hope, yes, and my commitment to, just so you know, anything that I present um, in this role. So with the, um, as President Corte mentioned, we should never collect data and put it on a shelf. It has a meaning. We collected it for some purpose. And the, the whole point is to make these numbers relevant. And so that's what I want to do in addition to crunching numbers. I'm, I think, a little more than that in this role, and I want to help um, make a difference with the numbers. So if you're wondering that, we are working toward change. Yes. Other questions? When I say we, I have some. I have some helpers involved in this that um, that can make some of these decisions for us. Any other questions? I don't know what time we're approaching, but if we're thinking about lunch, I think we're going to make it.